Hello and welcome to the webinar, How Effective Audiences Are Created in Open Audience. I'm your moderator, Calvin Sharfs, and I'll be your host. Today, we will bring our three-part webinar series to conclusion by demonstrating how effective audiences are created, activated, and measured in open audience. I'll take a few minutes to talk about the features of today's webinar and what to expect from our presentation today. We will spend about 40 minutes covering the content, leaving plenty of time for Q&A. If at any point you have a question, simply use the questions feature to ask that question and we'll get to as many of them as possible at the end of the presentation. Today's webinar will be recorded and available on demand. You will also receive an email with that link shortly. OpenX has invested in open audience over the last two years and millions of dollars in development and data partnerships. Our speakers today include Todd Parsons, Vicki Ng of OpenX, and Lara Koenig of MIQ, a marketing intelligence company that connects data insights to drive business outcomes. We talk a lot about concepts and mechanics in ad tech, but we don't talk enough about driving great market results as we should. One of the reasons that we have built open audience is because Facebook and other platforms have surged ahead of programmatic. We believe we're filling in gaps in programmatic to make it more competitive with the wall gardens. As you know, when we started building up an audience, we did a split test against Facebook and a traditional exchange deal. As you can imagine, who won? Facebook, of course. These best sparks are what we saw were the guiding light and footprint for building open audience. It's fun to see where we are at uh, and going head to head with them. Todd, I'll pass this over to you and begin the presentation. Right on. Thanks, Calvin. And uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, appreciate you joining us and taking time in uh, this, our, uh, the third of our three-part series. Uh, hopefully, there will be many more. Um, seems like we've struck a chord with people, and we look forward to continuing to get your feedback and suggestions about how we can make these better. Um, so first of all, just a, a, a quick recap on a few things to get us uh, warmed up today. Um, as Calvin um, alluded to, our first webinar um, in this series looked at tools for surviving what, you know, what I call ad tech's perfect storm. And it featured kind of one tangible approach for dealing with a part of that storm, the, the you know, uh, uh, deprecation of third-party cookies by uh, using LiveRamp's ATS solution and uh, open uh, audiences JavaScript library together um, to tackle a cookie-less marketing economy. Um, that was a great uh, uh, session. Our second webinar dove into open audience, which is, as Calvin said, you know, our large, our big bet at OpenX. It's our people-based marketing solution for the open web, you know, geared to engage in engagement and drive stronger marketing out outcomes through the supply side. So really important, there's a ton of demand side activity of marketing tools, um, of, uh, of data partners, of methods that, that have traditionally grown from the buy side, the planning and activation side of marketing and advertising. And what we're doing with, with open audience is rooted in the supply side. And um, so in that second webinar, we talked about um, how uh, our approach hopefully was um, a better one um, against uh, public policy, um, you know, privacy regulation, browser controls, um, and uh, and co competition from the uh, closed platform ecosystems like Facebook, uh, as mentioned. This is our uh, third webinar. We're going to um, get into we'll get rubber on the road um, to uh, to use a, a metaphor um, to demonstrate how effective audiences we think, at least in the early days here, can be created. Um, can be activated and measured in open audience. And we're going to look at examples of how um, our tech works. Um, we're going to talk about different ways to conduct test and learn um, by using um, what we've built um, you know, with, uh, um, with a partner here I'll introduce. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, look at some results, which is um, pretty cool, a good way to cap this off. So before I start, I'll zip through the first maybe five, 10 slides here for orientation. I want to say a big thank you to Laura um, Koenig from MIQ for joining us. Um, MIQ is notable really uh, amongst its peers for thought leadership in, in activating data and using data to fuel not just great planning, but real-time decision-making, just like you would do in a closed ecosystem, but but also on the open web. 
Um, important to say they operate in both environments. So, and and why they're such an ideal partner for us to work with in open audience. Um, so welcome, Laura. You're going to hear a lot from Laura. I um, also <laughs> wanted to say um, that we are going to be joined by our own Vicky Ng, who is a product manager on my team um, and and uh, um, is responsible for. Uh, open audience as it is uh, touched by users through uh, an evolving UI. So we're going to look at uh, some of the tool sets um, in open audience and Vicky will take us through that. Calvin, if you can hit the next slide. Um, before we get um, to to uh, the, the really good stuff, I wanted to address something straight up front. Um, we get asked a lot and um, people have been asking in this webinar, how exactly is COVID impacting advertising? You guys have, you know, had your rap going about the perfect storm in ad tech, but it didn't actually include a discussion about COVID as if we needed more challenges um, as an industry and as a bunch of peers here on this call. Um, so um, I just have a couple of quick uh, 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 bits of data here. Before COVID, we were looking at some great up and to the right metrics or at least uh, it, it, at least to the right and slightly up when it comes to overall growth of advertising and much more so, much more dramatic uh, growth of, of digital. Today, we're seeing some very different signals um, as an exchange, as a supply side partner, a, a matchmaker between buyers and sellers. I'll talk about that, but before, um, before I do, I um, would love to hear from Laura about what you're seeing and um, you know at, in the in the new normal of COVID and and advertising. Yeah, thanks, Todd. Um, I think we on the buy side have have seen sort of some expected shifts um, with some key verticals falling out, such as events or tourism. Um, but we've seen that a lot of uh, brands are continuing to spend throughout this. Um, notable uh, in financial services, uh, consumer tech, government, and pharma. Sort of across all verticals, we've seen that the, the primary thing marketers are focused on right now is actually delivering performance outcomes. So a lot of um, bottom line budgets uh, focused really on driving sales, conversions, and revenue um, remain lights on despite the macro events that are going on. We've also seen some really interesting shifts in, in the overall sort of media makeup of our advertisers where anything that can be canceled at this point has been canceled, which includes exercising TV upfront options uh, as well as sort of backing out of commitments to a lot of the, the large walled players. So I think it actually creates a lot of opportunity for uh, publishers and kind of the open web downstream to see a lot more performance-based advertising dollars, um, even in, in the current sort of advertising climate we're in right now. Yeah, that's um, those are great observations. Um, we ask ourselves a lot about, you know, how long it's going to take um, either dollars that are being shifted from those cancellations like upfronts into programmatic and through um, to where we have visibility um, in in the in our exchange. Um, and and we are also, you know, obviously watching very closely what demand looks like um, over the course of Q2, because while um, from an OpenX perspective, we've seen a bit of an initial bottoming of of uh, of decreased spend. We do hear from our demand partners, um, you know, like MIQ, that um, you know, they're seeing bigger numbers. So where we might be seeing, you know, 20 or 30 percent, um, and 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 gravitating more towards the former um, uh, partners, uh, DSPs and advertisers directly are talking about numbers that could be as much as twice that size. So I think. Um, what, what we're doing is kind of watching the current stability, keeping an eye on Q2 to see, you know, what kind of changes in the system haven't been pushed through to where they'd be visible to us um, and, and just uh, doing everything we can to help people get dollars into the system. Um, with that, just wanted to um, uh, reinforce something that you pointed out, Laura, which is there is a lot of counter cyclical spend happening, which is I think helping us see um, the level of spend decrease that we see uh, downstream from some of our demand partners. Um, there are people spending, some of them are being very opportunistic about it, and that's helping, I think, close the gap anecdotally between, say, a 40% drop in forecast to the 20 or so percent that we might be seeing at, at OpenX. 
So Cal, if you can um, go to the next slide. Um, this is an oldie, but a goodie. In fact, the next two are, I, I, I kind of couldn't help myself putting them in um, uh, because they've been thematic um, for, for uh, this series. Um, the collision of public policy when it comes to consumer privacy of browsers, you know, beating up the world, um, uh, either with, uh, you know, that policy or a position they developed on, on stewarding privacy for users. And then, of course, the threat of platforms um, that, that uh, command more spend than programmatic um, is an important thing to get across. So I'm going to keep going here. I think you all know what's on this slide. The, the main theme can be found on the next slide that I wanted to get across, which is that that there still is a great imbalance between the share of consumer attention that the open web enjoys versus the platforms and a great disparity between between that attention and how how money is getting spent on advertising. We still believe persistently that a lot of that fault is because of how ad tech is structured, the complexity of it, um, uh, the tax that we all pay with many partners, many handshakes, a whole lot of degradation. When you know a partner that I used to have in a past life like Facebook has really kind of put all of those problems in a box and made them easier to uh, to to consume for a buyer. So. Um, you know, we we um, we we think, and if you could go to the next slide, I like to say we we like to think that we're helping bring fight back to programmatic. Um, you know, not just for uh, for for OpenX and and its partners, but for the whole ecosystem. The idea that um, that we can continually persist with all of these headwinds, many of which we put in front of ourselves really defies reason and logic and yet um, you know we do end up in the same places so I think people um, like uh, us all on the call here um, can get together to remove that tax and that complexity and open audience of course is just one method for for uh, for doing that so um, you know we think the solution is rooted in in programmatic people-based marketing let's just have a quick look at what we mean by that um, you know, we talk about, um, oh, we're, you know, we are supply side focused and we talk about we are an enabler of people based marketing at OpenX. Um, what that means to us is that people based marketing should perform like it does in a platform. People shouldn't have to think about myriad identity solutions, myriad data partners, the lossiness that goes with integrating them. Um, the permission that someone might have with uh, um, with a publisher or set of publishers being knit together, um, they shouldn't have to deal with a lot of those problems, which are uh, endemic uh, or epidemic rather to the supply side. Um, and and so we we felt that OpenX we had a great opportunity to start addressing those uh, with open audience to to enliven programmatic feet people-based marketing and make it feel and look a lot like that in the box approach I described with Facebook. So on the right hand side, you can see their open audience starts with, um, with four goals. I just wanted to quickly recap them. Um, uh, we are um, through a lot of investment in data partners and tech, um, we are federating identity across all supply that we reach. Okay. Um, and of course, that's integration dependent. Um, there are certain limitations depending on integration partners. We tend to focus and, and bet big on prebit. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. But the idea of being able to look at a variety of identity partners in such a way that, that you can map a person um, to devices and avails um, or reach um, uh, and, and uh, content and creative types, also higher up to a household, is something that no one has to think about in the closed ecosystems. We want to do it here. <clears throat> the second thing we're doing, excuse me, with um, with uh, uh, open audience on the supply side is we're actually actively assisting publishers to gather and maintain permission um, for true people-based marketing. So that obviously doesn't mean the classic old consent management click of we use cookies to so-called better your experience. Mm. What it means is we're motoring towards an opt-in economy um, very quickly. We're motoring towards a, I'm gonna give you permission as a consumer to use my attention 
for advertising. Someone needs to keep track of that, not just to help publishers gather it, but also to codify it, to normalize it, and to map it across the whole ecosystem. So uh, that's as big of a mess and as big of a challenge as it is in taking demand side data, whether it's identity or third party data to build audiences. Third piece is um, we want to add as much consumer insight and context as we can to this ecosystem, this new supply ecosystem, people-based ecosystem, so that people don't have to dive into data stores, um, you know, go through data testing agreements and so forth. That's all very painful. I did that in a past life at Axiom, and um, I can tell you um, it slows things down to a level that spend migrates to platforms, which is something that we want to avoid. So have nothing against any data store, um, but it all needs to move much faster, and people need to access the goodness that's in those stores in a complete way without having to write checks first or the spend migrates, programmatic gets hurt, and everyone on this call will probably suffer as a result. Okay, and then finally, we're gonna look at what we're doing activation-wise. I talked about our UI work. Um, it is paltry um, and new compared to Facebook. Facebook has 12, 14 years on us. But um, the idea that we can take a lot of the problems we're solving the first three bars and make them very available through a UI, and or through an API, which your application can integrate with, is part and parcel to making programmatic PBM work. So just a summary of this, all supply side. Um, and I, I know, Laura, I know you have some um, opinions about su supply side approach, and maybe you can just weigh in here before we get on to some other detail. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, I think at MIQ, we, we really kind of resonate with the the idea that outcomes start at the supply side. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've leaned really, really heavily into using supply as, as kind of our flagship activation strategy, taking an advertiser seed segment and looking for overlapping users across um, publishers, domains, and apps. Um, so this has been kind of a, a core principle of ours, but there's been some challenges um, that we faced as buyers trying to uh, make sure that we're sort of planning the right contextual features for that audience, um, using the resources that we have available to us as buyers. I think one thing we've noticed is that um, a, a lot of the audiences that we have available programmatically are, are keyed to sort of a, a single or a primary DSP ID space, which kind of limits our ability to, uh, to get more of an agnostic view into where we should be buying um, to deliver outcomes for that brand. So some of the ways we've tried to overcome it over the last couple of years are actually um, sort of licensing folks like TopPad uh, and LiveRamp at a feed level ourselves to try to combat some DSP biases um, and, and, and reach further into the supply side. But uh, at the same time, we're kind of at the whim of the DSPs uh, as data partner syncing uh, usually happens in a waterfall priority queue. And so some of the ways that we have to uh, really um, maximize, try to maximize reach across audiences is uh, very manual still where we have to really try to influence our DSP partners to prioritize the data matching partners that we think are going to be most impactful to actually help us deliver the ad to the consumer on the site that we've planned will be effective. So there's a couple of mechanical challenges that that are kind of limiting our ability to um, to deliver results as as widely as we think it, it could go, um, which is why we're excited that that OpenX is, is think, thinking fairly similarly in, in uh, terms of integrating multiple data sources and also involving supply side more in the conversation up front versus um, what happens today, which is a little bit more of a downstream decision. Yeah, I, I, um, that, um, that feeling um, resonates with us. Um, I, I don't think anyone is trying to do anything but to, to build a, um, you know, a, a better, faster, you know, uh, solution. But the way that we're set up um, is, uh, is, very, is super clunky. Um, and, you know, the fact that, you, you know, you're where you sit in the ecosystem really driving, you know, results across, you know, multiple DSPs and a whole bunch of supply that we don't see, you know, it worries me that you, you don't feel like you can exert control. So, uh, because honestly, um, that, you know, that's where the goodness comes from in, in, the, in the platforms as 
uh, as a Facebook uh, marketing partner and you know one of their more strategic ones, it was very easy for me to influence uh, bid, influence uh, ad set, influence audience features, um, and do it with uh, machine learning and um, uh, and without having to think about any of this crap. Um, so you know, taking as much of that away um, in partnership, it's going to take partnership. I mean, there's not, unfortunately, there's not a silver bullet as we have discussed before. Um, but I, I think just acknowledging it here and and actually stating the problem is a really important part of getting to um, uh, the right solution. So appreciate your feedback. One other thing um, you mentioned on contextual, I think it's fascinating. We didn't talk about this getting ready for the webinar, but this this collision of contextual and audience targeting. I heard um, Scott Howe at uh, at the uh, at the live ramp event at Ramp Up in San Francisco. You know, not too many weeks ago, use the term uh, contextual addressable. Um, I think uh, um, no matter what you call it, I kind of like that. Um, I think it's interesting to see how. Um, with the right technology and the right data munching, those two worlds can can uh, uh, be be uh, complementary to an atom multiplier. So I think we're going to see a lot of that, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, hey, I, let let's just run through the next couple of uh, few slides. The next three here, um, uh, everyone gets this deck, and whether they like it or not, um, some people have really said, uh, "Hey, thanks. Can you tear this?" diagram or that diagram apart for me. Uh, I would just encourage more of that. We'd love to um, roll our sleeves up and get into the tech. Um, here, um, this is a little bit more of a architecture version of our, our, of, our, of our technology and open audience, but I wanted to talk about it just a tiny bit. Really at the core of solving the problems that, you know, that Lara was just um, doing a better job of describing. Um, what we've done is licensed files from uh, both identity and and consumer data partners so you see a few of them listed there they're the best of breed um i think they're um uh they're folks that uh um you know we we would all agree are, are household names and probably um uh would bring less liability for use um uh, and a lot more privacy first intention with themselves. So in the in the middle here, we have what we call OA match, which basically builds a household view of consumers. You can see on the you know right hand side there um, against uh, all connected devices and against all inventory that we see, biddable inventory that we see coming through our integrations in our exchange. So end to end, we have a live feed of available household data by consumer, by mobile device, by CTV device, by uh, 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 by ad type, um, so that we're basically doing a better job of emulating Facebook's backend. Okay, so OA matches at the heart of what we're doing. Um, on the left hand side, you see, you know, kind of. Our um, our partners have always been our deepest partners have always been publishers. It is now our job to get data into OA Match into our match table. Um, we use a couple of methods to do that. OAJS is our on-page solution, which is there to collect logged-in user data and to pass it um, through to our match table and through to the variety of DSPs that that actually bid into OpenX um, using their, their um, buyer IDs. So there's a lot of translation that goes on there, but um, uh, first you have to have collection. Um, we, of course, um, are uh, increasingly integrated with open audience with pre-bid, uh, and we can have a, I think we're gonna have a separate session just to talk about that connection later on. On the right-hand side, um, we have um, a uh, both the UI and API aforementioned. Um, uh, so I'm gonna skip over that because it's important to say that um, what's important is this core of creating a matching technology and a federated view of consumers across all supply. Um, it, for those of you who are gonna get the deck and look at it in the next slide on the bottom right, you'll see a, a summary of what that OAUID, which is just a mapping um, identifier. We're not trying to sell an ID. 
at OpenX, we're representing the best of our ID partners, which you see listed here. These are all real, these are all integrated. We are rebuilding a, a monthly graph across all of our supply with these guys, okay? So very powerfully able to get that kind of single view of, of consumers across supply and play it back um, regardless of the identifiers that are chosen, regardless of which file might be used for demographic and householding data or behavioral data or to marry context with that data. So what you see on the bottom right is really important. And the, what I wanna get across to everyone on the call is our journey is really just starting here. We have a lot of additional data to integrate, but right now we're able to get to 284 million monthly uniques. And I wanna say about 115 million dailies um, within our exchange with just what we have pictured here on the last two screens. Um, Next slide, Calvin, we'll give you a look at open audience um, uh, versus Facebook. Um, I, I um, uh, again, no beef with Facebook, um, but I think how Facebook packages itself is a, is a playbook uh, and an approach that we all should learn from in programmatic. Um, what we really don't do a good job of is saying, hey, look, um, a product like open audience you know that combines federates identity and user context through a variety of data partners makes it easy to access through an api um, or through a ui with permission and with quality controls for supply built in um, that that's a way of packaging on the left on the right we don't always do a great job of saying we got some major tools to put to work to make this packaging real um, we have 2,500 publishers that we're integrated with, and we're running, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of advertising through those pipes. Um, they're, they're the most notable publishers in the world, okay? They're publishing great content. People want it. Um, we have a market-leading position on brand safety as a company. Um, those feed into this packaging on the left. Um, I mentioned Open Audience Match, um, our graph. Um, uh, I didn't mention 3,000 fields of data, um, not just identity partners, but, but data which comes from our publishers uh, in PMPs, data which comes from uh, uh, partners like, uh, um, like Ninth Decimal for points of interest, like Affinity for credit card spend, like Experian for demographics and, and, uh, and, and household income, okay? Um, all of which can be made easily accessible through standard programmatic buying. We use deal IDs here so that what we're doing with open audience will work seamlessly with any DSP. No mapping file necessary, we'll get there. Um, but um, the, the point is that for now, we're trying to make this super easy for partners like you to enjoy, whether you're on the supply side or the demand side, and tell us how we should build a better mousetrap that protects the data security and the privacy of everything that goes through the system, which is my last point. Everything's privacy by design for open audience. I would welcome any questions on how we manage privacy. And, and um, that's not just consumers, but that's our data partners as well uh, and our advertisers. Okay, so next slide here is gonna get into running experience uh, experiments on, on open audience, pardon me. Um, and I want to get right into a little bit more about our foundational partner in MIQ. Um, so op if open audience is people-based programmatic enabled by federating identity and data across supply, MIQ is programmatic activation using that data and data-driven insights and trading technology. Um, so I, I can't say it as well as, uh, as our partner can. Um, Laura, tell us a little bit more about MIQ and this intersection here. Yeah, awesome. Um, so at MIQ, we're, we're about a 10-year-old uh, programmatic company um, that's really focused on delivering outcomes through campaign activation and analytics services. And then we built some enablement tech that, that helps our traders um, really automate and, and ideate on campaigns as well. Uh, I think one of the reasons we were excited to, to partner with OpenX um, for this is that we've actually been evolving our trading practices back since 20, uh, May of 2018. We were initially a UK founded company and now um, primarily US run. And uh, we wanted to make sure that all of our global practices were, were future proofed for not only sort of the regulations that came out in, in Europe um, two and a half years ago, but 
uh, also with CCPA and, and impending browser, browser changes as well. Um, so we've, we've really leaned into a very um, heavy sort of supply and, and contextual uh, activation strategy, uh, which highlights two of our, our strategic focuses this year, which we're really getting closer to publisher and supply partners, um, as well as continuing to reduce uh, reliance on any sort of syndicated third party audiences that, that our brands had requested views. We're actually down to less than 9% of our, our total strategies are reliant on any sort of um, off the shelf cookies, which is, is really encouraging. Um, that's why we thought the, the solution that OpenX outlined is, is super interesting because it, it really speaks to those two principles is bringing buyers and, and sellers and publishers closer together. Uh, and then also rethinking how, how brands and buyers specifically uh, use audience um, and, and evolving that for, for a future sort of ecosystem. Yeah, well, I know you guys um, have, uh, I mean, you've been a great partner. You just dove in and and uh, you told us a lot about what we needed to do um, to to make a, 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 you know, a better workflow, a better system. And we're learning from that. Um, I wanted to get into kind of a variety of, of audience capabilities. I know you haven't used all of these, Laura, but um, uh, but we'll look at what you have in, in uh, your case study. Um, for the rest of the folks on the phone, when we talk about test and learn and open audience, and there's a few different things that we currently support. Um, and so left to right here, um, uh, creating your own custom audience exactly like you would in Facebook, whether um, you're using a third party file for prospecting or a first party CRM file um, for, for seeding or remarketing. Um, that's all possible in open audience without, um, you know, having to uh, go to another place. Um, we felt like uh, a partner, what we call partner audiences were a necessary starting point for open audience to get scale. A lot of times um, because programmatic doesn't have the reputation for being automatical in audience creation like Facebook is, um, it's hard to get at the numbers. So we built, you know, a bunch of partner audiences which tap into our data partners, identity partners to basically structure things that for those um, advertisers that don't have a targeting set in mind or want to ex experiment with a prospecting set that they don't have to go and buy data for, they can use our partner audiences. Uh, we, of course, are with open audience supporting lookalike audiences and uh, I mentioned, you know, onboarding first party data to build those, um, whether, um, you know, hashed identifiers, um, anonymized identifiers are being brought in, or whether on the far right, you're bringing in um, an, uh, uh, an ID from one of our partners, LiveRamp, um, of course, um, if you were on this webinar series, um, has been another foundational partner to us. We are able to take audiences directly from LiveRamp Connect. Um, we are matching, I think, more IDLs than anyone in the ecosystem, meaning uh, we have a tremendous amount of reach um, for Identity Link across this footprint that, that we've talked about. So if you're using I Identity Link and you want a really easy way to do test and learn um, into what will feel like Facebook, you've, you already are invested the right way and we, we're in business and you can do it straight through Connect. Okay, next slide. Um, I just want to get real for a second about how we're just uh, build, build this slide, if you will. Um, this is how we're, thanks, Calvin. We're, this is how we are, are pushing the data from OA Match into our publisher partners. So anyone who's syncing with us um, or has done an offline uh, uh, match with us is able to get to the data in OA Match across all of our partner audiences, as I mentioned. Um, so um, this this was uh, data that um, uh, was taken, I think, fairly recently from a partner. And all, what it's showing you is that we are able to map credit card uh, uh, prospects. We are able to match home furnishings and appliances prospects um, and so on and so forth across these categories for each of our publishers. And this is really important because if we're going to bring value to publishers in the audience world, we need to actually go beyond um, simple bidding because the idea of what makes a credit card audience a good prospect or an idea a good, uh, a good uh, prospect is not necessarily covered 
by the way identity and data solutions are used in programmatic. Conversely, in Facebook, it's well covered. So we wanna avoid that. Um, this view actually just says that we've got a good starting point for marketers and this data is available for our publishers without having to go and buy a multi-million dollar CDP or you know, hope that your data management platform, your DMP is gonna solve for, for this, uh, this particular issue. You go to the next slide. Um, and just, uh, I'll be quick about this. This is, um, we're gonna go right into a case study that talks about prospecting for automotive insurance. And all of this is gonna show everyone on the phone. And you know, we have, uh, happy to give you um, uh, data on all of the partner audiences that are here. This basically just breaks down how we built those audiences, what features they merge, what domains they're most popular on, um, how much reach we have on a monthly um, basis, which devices are being reached, um, and importantly, you know what we think um, the the range of floors and and ceilings being set for bidding um, should be based on what we observe. You know, one auctions uh, 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 going through our exchange. So we couldn't do this without our match table, and um, you know, this is kind of a little bit of boring marketing material, but uh, but people seem to like it and I, it does ground what a partner audience is. Calvin, go to the next one, will you please? Okay, cool, since launching, and then I'm gonna hand it off to, uh, to Laura. Um, just wanted to keep it real for everyone on the phone. Um, we have been in private testing and are really emerging to uh, an early scale business. And I'm excited to report some of the, the progress since uh, our last webinar. Um, we have, uh, uh, I think in our last webinar, we had about 30 audiences running. That was a month ago. We've, we've doubled that. We're seeing th that, that kind of activity in the market. Um, we have 41 um, you know, partner audiences being activated at some level. Um, only 24 custom audiences created. When I put this stat down, I thought, Wow, you know, in Facebook, we we would be embarrassed uh, by the for one client, we'd be embarrassed. So it just gives you a sense for how far we need to go to to get people comfortable, advertisers and partners like MIQ comfortable with onboarding and creating a custom audience in in open audience. But we're excited because this is this was a zero two and a half months ago. Okay, so, and then finally, um, how are we doing with publishers? We're super engaged with our publishers. Um, obviously, it is not trivial to be running a JavaScript uh, library and adding page weight, especially to the Comscore 100, uh, but we're making good progress there. And uh, I think we're doing it because, um, we, you know, we're, um, we're willing to, to, uh, to try different methods and uh, and we've got a bunch of great partners. So I'm going to keep you um, uh, abreast of what's going on with uh, with open audience testing and just really ground everything we talk about in real data as much as we're able to reveal without being stupid. Um, and uh, and with that, I think we can kind of move right into um, the next part of the webinar, which is is really the meat of it. And that is, you know, how are we working to make this all happen um, in, and reflect in better marketing results for, for an insurer. So Laura, take it away, school us a little bit on how you're doing your work, will you? Awesome, yeah. I think um, rather than go into sort of a long history of MIQ, um, I wanted to highlight some of the things that we're hearing from a lot of our partners. So we are partner agnostic, both in, in buying points, so working with directly with brands, agencies, consultancies, kind of anyone that, that touches programmatic media spend. But also more importantly, we're agnostic to DSP, agnostic to data provider, and agnostic to supply. So we want to make sure we're seeing it as, as wide of an ecosystem as possible. Uh, and with that, we've actually learned a lot about some of the mar uh, challenges marketers have been facing over the last couple of years. Uh, the first thing I want to highlight is, is, as Todd mentioned earlier, a real fragmentation of data. A lot of brands are, are opted into very various DMPs, analytics suites, um, reporting systems, ad servers, um, uh, and ultimately, you know, activation data partners as well. Um, and there's a real difficulty translating this into sort of holistic, more smart campaign targeting, um, just due to the, the sheer breadth of partners that, that touch in any individual programmatic plan. Uh, at the same time, particularly within data, there's been a lot of changing regulations, both at the government level as well as the browser level. 
uh, which has a lot of brands really thinking around how they they evolve their targeting strategies, um, particularly in in verticals where they might not be as as data rich in online first party data. Um, so that's been super interesting to watch. Uh, and then there's also been an increasing division of access, uh, both to data and inventory between two different sides of the sort of advertising ecosystem, the closed uh, web, which involves, you know, the Facebooks that's, that Todd has mentioned, but also, um, uh, you know, Google, Amazon, uh, and other sort of key players within the programmatic environment. Uh, and then also the open web, um, where there's um, a, a wider set of, of partners um, that are really having to come together and, and form um, a lot of active partnerships and, and coalitions to address identity and, and changes. Um, so we've seen this is actually creating a lot of complexity within marketers plans um, where they either have to compromise and select a fully closed solution that gives them more integrated capability but perhaps presents them with a, a more limited sort of um, scope of their their addressable users or, or internet activity or it forces advertisers to compile more of a piecemeal solution that provides uh, a lot of access and high levels of customization but um, can lead to fragmented or sometimes unwieldy campaign life cycles so at MIQ, we're, we're really um, focused on solving a lot of these challenges for marketers. We operate across both open environments as well as closed. Uh, but in this case, we wanted to highlight some of the work we've done with OpenX uh, to test the open audience product um, across one of our open platforms um, for one of our marketers that, that leans really heavily into more of the latter uh, of uh, uh, more fragmented partner um, ecosystems, but, but high levels of customization. So that takes us into the next slide. Uh, the first campaign that we we tested this for was actually one of our flagship evergreen clients um, focusing on uh, incremental auto insurance quotes. Um, they've been investing in programmatic for years and years and are really laser focused on not only driving a certain CPA, but driving you know, an incremental CPA beyond um, what they consider their baseline activity. For this campaign, we're very, very heavily leveraged on, on smart contextual activation. Again, um, there, there's something really rich about um, marrying what an odd, uh, a user is doing on a publisher um, and then serving out on that publisher. Uh, but there's, at the same time, only so much you can deliver on, uh, say, an auto-endemic only um, contextual strategy. So we thought the, the OpenX solution was interesting in that um, this campaign actually didn't rely on any, any audiences um, or any sort of, of cookie-based solution prior to, to this test. So we wanted to see if we can make audience uh, alongside context uh, perform at the same levels that our, our contextual only um, strategies were delivering. Uh, the test was super helpful um, in, in sort of solving that challenge, but also um, introducing some new publishers to the campaign. Um, some of that we wouldn't have assumptively selected or uh, that had previously proven sort of poor performance. And so a lot of um, more general interest sites that necessarily weren't as, as auto-endemic um, were introduced to the uh, to the plan, which actually uh, proved some some positive performance results. Um, and then I did want to note that that there's no silver bullet within programmatic. I think any partner supply um, TSP etc. needs to be optimized alongside everything else. Um, so we were we were grateful to partner with OpenX um, uh, over the course of about three weeks to really optimize this down towards our goals, which kind of highlights another key learning that we took away, which is um, when you do get buyers and and sellers in the same room. Um, the speed to actual uh, delivering campaign results can, can massively accelerate. Uh, and then looking at the next slide um, in terms of absolute results, uh, we compared this to sort of our overall deal performance where we saw about a 10% uh, efficiency gain for the open audience deal uh, versus um, more of like a, a run of network um, PMP, which was uh, it was beneficial and then as I mentioned again um, over the course of three weeks we were able to bring this strategy down to the CPA goal which was really impressive because um, no other audience products had had delivered for the campaign over the past couple of years. Um, uh, also another note on the testing process is this actually um, helped us identify a lot of um, sort of more macro uh, influences that our, our DSP, SSP and, and publishers were, were all um, contributing to so uh, Outside of the individual sort of line item, um, I think we we learned a lot through working closely with OpenX to um, make sure we're getting as much access to all the publishers that we'd like to um, as possible, and and combating some like CDSP biases as well. Um, so with that, I'm actually going to hand over to Vicky, who's going to take you through the actual creation of these audiences. Thanks, Laura. 
Uh, good morning, everyone. Can we have the next slide, please? And another one. So here's one of the reasons why we keep talking about Facebook. It's one of the best examples of a simple, seamless audience buying experience. It takes about two minutes to set up an audience and have a campaign go live. And this kind of a simplicity is integral to how much spend Facebook is pulling in from all sorts of marketers. We're fully aware that no one really wants to learn yet another UI, so our ultimate goal is to be able to bring this kind of audience by experience to the open web while still providing a unified view of identi um, identity across supply. Next slide. So as I go through setting up the audience, you also see that we're bringing together a variety of third-party data sources in addition to our own exchange data to support our client's data and make it work across different applications. Um, I've actually recorded this demo run in advance to make sure that nothing randomly drops off from my pretty terrible internet right now. So, um, Calvin, can you please hit play? Hello. Today I'm going to show how a marketer might use our open audience UI to upload their own list of users and create a custom audience for their needs. To start, I'm going to go ahead and log in as our demo marketer user. And after logging in, I'll be shown a list of custom audiences that has already been created on this account. We'll come back to this later. First, I've got a user file that I would like to upload. So I head over to segments where I find a list of previously uploaded files as well as what I'm looking for, which is the option to upload more files. So hit the nice blue button. I'm given the option to name the segment specify the type of identifier and browse for a file to upload. There's also an explanation of formatting guidelines to make sure that my file upload will work as expected. I know I have a file containing mobile device IDs, so I'll select mobile ad IDs here, find my file, and proceed with the upload. It takes a few seconds to process, and then I get a notification that the upload was successful. What, he, what happens here now is OpenAudience will now process this file to match what is in the user tables, which might take a few hours depending on the size of the file. I receive an email notification after the matching process is complete, so I come back to the UI and I see here that my file has been processed. Great, now I can bounce back to the audience's page and create a new custom audience using this file. So let's say I'm a marketer buying for a streaming company and the file I just uploaded is a list of known subscribers. I'm going to test out open audience by putting together a simple audience of users who show interest in or have a habit of streaming TV. I'm going to name my custom audience and start going through my options. I see location, states, DMAs, there's demographics, which isn't quite what I want yet. Here I find predefined audience segments, which includes all the specific interest and behavior segments. So let's try to search for streaming and TV to see what I can throw together. So here I've got streaming services, which I want to include. And I might want to exclude users who show low interest in streaming TV or just streaming services in general. And here, maybe I want to include people who have a history of browsing TV-related web pages. Now I'm looking at this and I decide maybe I'm not being quite specific enough. My client service is mostly targeting millennials, so I go back up and change the specified age range. A couple of seconds after I make these changes, I can also see that the right panel here with our reach estimates and breakdowns changes to reflect the new reach of the audience that I'm creating. So now I'm satisfied with my choices, but there's one last thing that I have to do exclude the file that I have already uploaded of my own subscribers. So I hit exclude under first party and find a demo mates to file. I'm done here, so I hit save. Saving the audience brings me back to the audiences I've created. 
OpenAlliance will now use a few minutes to create a table of users based on the criteria I've chosen. And as it finishes, I can now see the addressable reach, which is the expected reach of the audience in the OpenX exchange, along with what this audience is actually composed of. I can do a number of things here, but right now I want to export this audience, which sends it through to the OpenX exchange and alerts our managed services team who will provide me with a deal for this audience. I can now take this deal ID and set it up with any DSP of my choice to start buying. Uh, next slide, please. So now that you've had a look at what we currently have, I also wanted to give a preview of a couple of new features that we're working on right now to help expand a marketer's data reach and bring together third-party services. First up, we have lookalikes, which probably isn't a foreign concept. You can use your own users as C to find new users to target and expand reach. And the specificity and size of the lookalike audience depends on your choice starting from highly similar users, but likely much lower reach, to more broadly matched users, but higher reach. The next feature or service that we're close to releasing is the LifeRamp Connect support, where you can distribute your audiences directly from LifeRamp Connect to Open Audience. Um, Open Audience will receive a match this IDL file and make these matched users available to buy on the open web. So that's all I have for you today, and I'm gonna pass this back to Calvin, who will take Q&A. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone and our speakers for our insights. Uh, we appreciate your time. Um, we have some time for some questions right now that we'll go ahead and ask. Um, and uh, we'll throw those out to um, either uh, to Todd or to Laura uh, to decide who wants to answer it. Um, so the first question comes from a, a person named Chris. Do SSPs, DSPs, and DMPs need financial relationships with your device graph and data partners to enjoy maximum available benefits of open audience? I think we'll give that to Todd. Yeah, so um, the answer is, uh, it is um, unfortunately a little bit complicated. Um, for analytics purposes, absolutely not. Um, you know, um, the, the problem is that um, traditionally, data partners have written, you know, different terms and conditions in paper with everyone under the sun, and they don't necessarily mesh up per perfectly. What we have done, the approach we've done to take this complication away is we've cut deals that give us analytics access to data across the entire ecosystem. So anyone can access what you're seeing here without fee. Um, there are issues, if you're working with OpenX, um, the there are issues with activation that come from specific contractual terms um, that that do vary um, generally speaking um, as long as a data partner um, you know is making its money um, they're they're happy to see more scale um, so sometimes we'll have to sit down um, with whoever the name partner is and figure it out but by and large we have not seen that um, what we have seen is that um, is that you know people are super stoked to get the full file and to be able to use it to either analyze their own audiences if they're publishers or to create um, to plan and create audiences um, across all of uh, supply of their marketers without any limitation. Great, thank you. Um, next question is from Martin. Um, how is this compared or comparing to Google's audience solution? Well, that's a that's a good question. Um, maybe uh, Laura, do you want to take that one? I, I I have an opinion, but I bet you have a better one. Yeah, I think I can I can just speak to um, sort of our experiences as, as Google buyers, and um, Google's a, a great partner to us as well. Um, what we've seen from the the Google audience solution, similar web, uh, or sorry, similar audiences in market audiences and affinity, or uh, up until very recently, they uh, they were sort of modeled off of the um, the the Google AdX universe, um, and they actually didn't integrate um, third parties such as like a, an Experian or a Tapad, and so uh, I think it was kind of single source, which. Uh, it is a valid source, um, but we we saw that when marketers applied um, those audiences, the delivery w was um, sort of skewed based on on the universe provided by that DSP and by that that SSP. Um, so I think by by integrating more 
um, sort of agnostic partners into the planning cycle, like, like OpenX has done, it might um, help sort of combat any any biases of, of what that partner specifically sees. Um, but uh, Google as well has also opened up to, to recent um, contextual signals that they're, they're feeding that actually do extend the audiences to, to other third party exchanges, but uh, we haven't really seen the impact of that yet with, um, with a lot of the delivery still going towards, towards Adex. So yeah, I think it's a little long-winded, but um, single partner uh, is the main difference, I would say. It's right on the money. I mean, um, I can envision a time when we're bridging across single partners, whether it be a Facebook or, or uh, Google's audience solution or, or um, you know, an open audience type product. Um, but that aside, I think um, I did want to add tangibly that um, Google is our biggest um, revenue partner um uh, uh depends on the day i think but uh um they're also um one of our biggest supply partners so we work very closely with um the open bidding folks um the guy who runs product for that crew sam cox is an old open xer um, and we're working really hard to figure out how to work as an api partner to them as privacy sandbox and as the audience solution itself is developing on the demand side of Google. So, of course, you have different functional parts of Google trying to figure this out too. So, unfortunately, it doesn't always happen as fast as you might like, but we're making great progress from the supply side too. Um, and I think somewhere in the next year, we should see how those converge. That's a great question. Awesome. I think we have time for a couple more questions. Um, the next one is uh, is uh, from uh, Leon. Um, can you please speak to the individual individual publisher advantages on increasing value of their inventory by participating via open audience versus building their own audience strategy? Yeah, I mean that is a uh, um, obviously it's you know our job we think leon to bring um you know a uh, an ever increasing amount of value to publishers so not necessarily just increased spend but in a in a perfect world i would see it as increased spend net new spend um and uh and definitely uh, more value per id being bought um, because that would indicate that um that MIQ has gotten, you know, the data uh, markers that they need for better for better performance. Um, so, um, so you know, I guess um, uh, the uh, you know the the idea that um, you know that that uh, you know you know that that this is one or the other is is uh, is not going to hold up. Um, and you know we're just going to kind of keep working on this thing. Um, there's not a, there's not a great a, a, anything more that we can really do that we're doing already, um, but it's just going to take time. I have a quick opinion on this one as well, um, from like a buy spy perspective. I talked about some of the challenges with um, sort of the bifurcated ecosystem of closed web versus open web. Within open web, there there's a lot of opportunities that present themselves to buyers. Um, both in like what DSP platform you choose, then the SSP, then down to the, the publisher and, and even more granular inventory objects. So I think anytime we can remove the, the sort of manual relationship complexity between um, taking you know, what Navtransor wants to deliver on, which is, is their data segment, uh, and then the actual you know, end ad delivery on a publisher, um, the way we can sort of minimize the hops um, in between that process really helps actually, I think in my opinion, um, increase a publisher's ability to actually access more buy side dollars, because um, it's not reliant on on the buyer sort of individually navigating through to that, that publisher. Totally. And let me just comment on the net new thing. And our, you know, our uh, uh, approach is to actually take, you know, those views of our publisher's audiences out to the demand side and sell them proactively. So I think it'd be one thing to see how this plays out passively and then report back to you increased um, ECPMs or increased volumes. We've seen both of them um, uh, uh, truthfully in testing, but I wouldn't call what we've done so far scale. What I can say that I, I believe in more is we're selling what we are presenting to you actively. 
to the demand side. And we're working with partners like Laura and her team to make sure that what comes through performs. So those partners are happy to pay a higher CPM for it. Full stop. That's what we're doing. And, uh, um, you know, we're going to keep doing it unless you tell us different. All right. Thank you, Todd. We've run out of time. Uh, there was a couple of questions that we did not get to. We will follow up on those personally. Um, I want to uh, thank all of uh, our folks attending the webinar today. As a reminder, this is being recorded or has been recorded, and we will send you a link via email um, and always refer to our ar archives of webinars on our video resources page on openx.com slash resources slash videos. Thank you to all of our speakers and to all of you for attending. Enjoy the rest of your day and please be safe.